Let's take a look at Quasar's breadcrumbs component. You're really going to love this. Q dash breadcrumbs. That's the name of the component. And we actually need to have some elements in there as well. So let's say Q dash breadcrumbs dash EL. EL is for element. And then we can put a label in there and set that to home. So let's save it. And there we go. It doesn't look like much to begin with. But if we copy paste that down, we can start adding some more like components. And then let's call this breadcrumbs, save it. And there we go. By default, we get some really nice styling for our breadcrumbs component. Now, another thing you might want to do is add some icons in. So let's come down here and say icon is equal to, and this first one, let's give it an icon of home. The second one, I'm going to use widget, sir, widgets, and then navigation. So let's take a look at that. Cool. Already looking really nice for virtually no work. I love it. And another thing you might want to do is have only icons. So maybe the icons are descriptive enough or on certain devices, you only want to show the icons. So let's come down here and select all of the labels and then get rid of those. And there you have it, just a more simplified version. But I'll bring us back to our original example. So what about changing the colors? Well, what we could do is come up here and say class is equal to text dash secondary, for example, to use our secondary color. And what that will do is change the color of everything that doesn't have a color styled by the cube bread for Chrome component. I'll show you what I mean. So let's cut that out. And notice that the only color changes here are home and components. So that's why when I add in text secondary, the slash here, the slash here, and also this breadcrumbs part, they're the only ones that actually take on the color. So that's an important thing to point out. Also, you might want to change the color of the separator itself. So let's say separator color. Maybe we want that to be primary. Save it, refresh the page, and it's kind of hard to tell, but I'm pretty sure that did actually work. But another thing we might want to do is change the gutter. So the gutter is basically the distance between the slash and the next item that is a breadcrumb. So we can come in here and say gutter and make that extra small. Basically, it just makes everything a lot denser and we can go all the way up to extra large. So there we go. We can go ahead and change the gutter if we need. We can also align it differently. So in order to display this properly, I'm going to get rid of these classes up here and add in padding. All right, so now it's showing just at the top here, which is probably a really good place to have your breadcrumbs. In fact, that's what we do at the company I work for. We have breadcrumbs at the top here, so it's really easy for the user to know where they're at. We can also come up here now and say align is equal to right. That's going to align it to the right. And of course, we've got center as well. But a few ones that I didn't find out for a while is between basically a lot of your flex related stuff around and then also evenly. So I like to use evenly here. I think that looks really, really nice having your breadcrumbs at the top like that, especially on a mobile device. This would look awesome. All right. So one more thing I want to point out is changing the separator. What we can actually do is come in here and say separator is equal to and then change it to an arrow. And so this slash here is the separator. Therefore, when I save this, it's replaced with that right arrow. Or you could even do like a bunch of dashes, for example. That's going to work too. But what if you want even more control over your separator? Well, in that case, you can come in here and say template and then say hashtag separator, picks up my formatting here. And now we can put something in. So let's do that right arrow again. And there we go, that's working. But then you could say Q dash icon, and then give this a name equal to something like whatever you wanna use from your icon library, arrow underscore right. And there you go. We have total control over the separator as well. Now, just for fun, Let's also throw this into the top bar because that's a place where you would often use breadcrumbs. I'm going to grab everything within the breadcrumbs component and the breadcrumbs component itself. So basically everything on that page and then jump into our main layout. And let's add another toolbar here, Q dash toolbar, and then paste that code in there. And there we go. It doesn't look like much because a lot of the colors are clashing. So let's come up here and change the colors a little bit. Looks like I'll have to do something like, let's say active dash color is equal to white. 
And there you have it. How cool is that? The breadcrumbs component is really, really awesome. Oh, there's one more thing I definitely need to show you, and that is the fact that these can be links as well. So let's say two is equal to slash when you click on home. And then when you click on widgets, you can take us to the components page. And then if it's navigation, take us to components slash navigation. Save that. And now we can actually click on these, they're links. And of course that page doesn't exist, so it doesn't work. But also notice that the last one is not going to be clickable, which makes sense because if you're on that page, then you shouldn't be able to click on the link. So there we go, Quasar's breadcrumbs component. Hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you in a future video. Bye for now.